Hey everyone, Sean McElroy here with our AutoLine exclusives. Joining me today is Lou Camilli, the president of a company called Polestar. Now, if you're a viewer of our AutoLine Daily program, you may have heard of this company the other day. You're making some interesting spark plugs. Lou, can you tell us a little bit about your company? Uh, yes, the, uh, the company was founded here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, uh, close to Sandia National Labs. People should know it's one of our premier defense laboratories. And one of their divisions is called uh, the High Power Lab. And they specialize in extreme power, uh, one of them being fission and fusion for that matter. But we did a lot of our work with Sandia when we were developing the product and that's really where its bedrock sits. Very cool. So now let's go into the spark plug that you guys have developed. I find this very interesting. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, the, the spark plug is the only one out there that actually improves the electrodynamics of the spark event. Everybody else makes a spark where with our embedded capacitor within the envelope of the spark plug, we're able to create plasma by charging the capacitor and then discharging it automatically when a spark arrives to create what's called low temperature plasma. It's the same plasma that's created during the combustion process. So instead of starting the fire with a little spark, we pour gas on it first and then light it. And that's a pretty good analogy. I like it, I like it. So I find that very interesting. Within the same envelope of a traditional spark plug, you have this capacitor that's built within there? They said it couldn't be done uh, when I started a while back and all the more reason to prove them wrong. Uh, the people at Sandy agree with me, the double E's and triple E uh, people said it can't be done simply because of the, the qualities or the electrical properties of ceramic. What they didn't figure in was that they were dealing with people that deal with it all the time and understand that the electrodynamics of a very fast discharge override the standard properties of ceramic. So we were able to re, call it re, what's it called? Repurpose the insulator. The insulator became the capacitor. So it's providing two functions. It's the dielectric between the two the positive and negative plate of the, of the capacitor. And it is also inhibiting spark breakthrough being a dielectric media. And so we were able to thin the wall down to get the capacitance we needed and then <clears throat> incorporate uh, a circuit, if you will. Very, very simple. Uh, it, it, it's a really interesting circuit that allows the capacitor to charge during the time that the coil is increasing voltage to overcome the resistance in the spark gap and make a spark. So while it's charging, voltage is building up. And when you make a streamer, that'd be the, the connection between negative positive, that's the trigger that triggers the capacitor to discharge. And when it discharges, you don't get four or 5,000 watts, you get five megawatts of power. And it's the power that creates the plasma. So then that power is just strong enough to break everything up inside and then it's creating the plasma that way? Right, it's, it's a very interesting phenomenon. It's a very energy dense plasma, uh, full of radicals, ions, uh, single molecules that are very reactive. And when you expose that to a, to a fuel charge, to a gaseous substance that ignites, ignition is instant. Uh, the, the Physics Society uh, came out with a statement that said, everybody knows that when you expose plasma to fuel, good things happen. And that's really what's happening here. Ignition occurs at the same point in the cycle, every cycle. The flame front is much more energetic. Uh, it doesn't require a lot of laminar flow to continue burning. 
uh, tests at Sandy Labs, as well as Southwest Research, AVL, even Ricardo, have all shown that our zero to 50 mass fractional burn is always faster than a conventional spark. And that's when you get your torque, and that's why we have more torque. Okay, well, you talk about more torque. What are, can you put some numbers on that? What are the advantages or what are the, uh, what do you get from this? The biggest benefit, and this comes from our customers, we tell them what we think they're going to see, and then they come back and tell us what they saw. And almost, oh, it, it's a huge number, a very high percentage of people in the 90s. The first thing they see is that throttle response is vastly improved. When you step on the gas, things happen fast. And, and that's what they really like. Uh, the people that drive and pull trailers like the torque, they don't change gears driving up a hill. Uh, how much depends on the engine, depends on the, the, the timing, the, the programming that's in the computer. Uh, we've seen as much as 10% more torque. We've seen as little as 1%, depending on the engine. We've seen 15 more horsepower in one case. Uh, so the, the power is there, and it's all derived from not, not using more air and gas, but using it more efficiently. And by using things more efficiently, you eliminate some of the drawbacks of a, of a liquid fuel. Very interesting. So if I got this right, you know, you're, you're storing energy from the coil in this capacitor, then using that to, to light off. So it sounds like you only just need these spark plugs. Pull out the old ones, put in the new ones, and you're good to go. Is that right? Well, not quite that easy, but today, yes. Uh, originally, we had, uh, it took us two or three years to develop, and it's all because of the circuit. It took us a few years to develop a plug-and-play product, which is what, what I really wanted, where all you do is take it out, take your old plug out, uh, make sure your gaps are correct. We always use a smaller gap. You don't need a big gap anymore. And plug it in. Uh, the, the, the engine takes care of the rest. And can you use it in any type of engine, gasoline, direct injected, turbocharged, that, that sort of deal? Of course. We have the fastest riding lawnmower in the country. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> Well, you know, so I guess uh, maybe what a lot of people will ask is cost. Is is there a cost uh, more to this cost for these th than a traditional plug, let's say, or I, I should say a good quality traditional plug? If you're looking at spark plugs today, almost all of them are using iridium in all of the premium brands. And our cost is equivalent or less than most of them. So it's, it's, uh, you're not paying a premium to get the power. Well, that's great. And, and then where can, where can you get them at? You can get them online. Uh, you can get them from us. You can get them from sparkplugs.com. You can get them from Amazon. You can get them from Horror Racing Products, JNP Cycles. Uh, motorcycles is really uh, my heart throb. I own a couple. And I really like what it does to the big cylinder cruisers. Um, they're the ones that are most vociferous about the results. They really are excited. Well, what I find kind of interesting is, you know, there's so much talk these days about electric vehicles, and it seems like everybody's investing in it. But the internal combustion engine still looks like it's going to play a big role in this market for some time to come. Uh, there is no doubt. There, there's plenty of fuel. There's plenty of oil. It's going to be around a long time. We're finding more all the time. We're now the number one producer of, of petroleum in the world. Uh, I don't think it's going anywhere. The cost of electricity uh, is, be, is going to be going up with all of the coal plants being uh, shut down, as I see it. Uh, my biggest problem, I like electric vehicles. Don't think, don't think otherwise. I really do. I driven them, I like them, I like the way they accelerate. But what do you do with the batteries? I mean, it becomes an ecological problem. Um, and if everybody had them, then it's a real big problem. So we have to come up with a way to be able to either reuse or take care of the battery residue when they're done. Yeah, yeah, that's a, a big issue facing automakers, suppliers, everybody, is how do you end-to-end -end life cycle recycle these batteries once they're done. I mean, there's second 
life use for them, but what do you do after that? But same with you. I mean, I love EVs, love to drive them, love the direction that they're going in. Looks like we're going to have a lot of cool stuff coming to the market. But at the same time, if internal combustion engine is going to be around for many, many years to come, we might as well make them as fun and as efficient as we can. I agree. I agree. So, Lou, is there is there anything we're missing here? Anything else you want to talk about? Uh, <clears throat> it's really hard to explain to a customer who's been around a long time. My brother being one, he's he's an old guy, <laughs> older than me, and he's an old he's a old school. Uh, it, it's hard to get new technology uh, to be accepted by these people. And we're making ground, we're breaking ground with all of them, but they really have a hard time accepting new technology. And, and that's really what we have here. We have an absolutely new technology. It's groundbreaking. Uh, it does things that spark plugs have never been able to do in the past, and we're doing it well. But you still have those hard-headed guys that say, no, you can't make any difference with just by changing spark plugs. And that's been our biggest hurdle, is getting through that. Well, I think the cool part about what you guys have got is that so many times performance add-ons to a vehicle can be thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars. We're talking about something seemingly fairly simple where you can just pull the old one out, put the new one in at a fairly decent cost, and you're getting these performance upgrades from it. That was the target, and I think we hit it. So as what I'm saying is, is that for someone that might be skeptical, getting into this might not be that uh, cost intensive for them to do it. And who knows, maybe it'll do exactly what it says and blow them away. I've had that experience many times from people who said it won't work. And then when we put it on, I said, all right, I'm taking them back now. They said, no, 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 I keep them. Yeah, I'll keep them in the car. <laughs> well, so I. The product has been the biggest salesman. Uh, you put it on a car from so in, in a, somebody's car who is a little bit reluctant, doesn't believe it. Uh, they drive it and they fall in love. My favorite story is Bobby Unser. Oh, you Bobby, gotta tell me that one. Bobby Unser says it can't happen, it won't happen. Went to his dyno on his S10 V6, picked up 10 horsepower. He drove it up and down the street, came back, and he said, I got a lot more testing to do. And I said, won't you admit it works? Ah, rah, 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 rah. So we proved it. And, and still, you know, still that that uh, a doubt remains on his Dyno 10 horsepower. Well, that's very good. And I can't wait to test it out myself. I'd love to put these in a vehicle and get some uh, my butt in the seat and feel what it's like myself. You will be surprised. Well, Lou Camilli, president of Polestar, I can't thank you enough for coming on today. Been my pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. And thank you for taking the time. Yeah, thanks.